How to Pay for the Green New Deal by Yevener Sisyon and L. Randall Ray The Job Guarantee Path to Jobs for All and a Source of Resources for the Green New Deal The Green New Deal endorses full employment through a job guarantee program, a true full employment platform where anyone who wants to work has access to paid to a paid job. The job guarantee has always been an important part of MMT. We have long argued that running up aggregate demand to try to achieve full employment would probably cause too much inflation long before the goal of full employment was reached. Instead, MMT relies on the job guarantee to do the heavy lifting. The program offers a basic wage and provides a job guarantee and provides a Green New Deal job to anyone willing to work. This operates like a commodity price support program, ensuring wages do not fall below the program wage without competing with the private sector to push wages higher. Private employers can always recruit from the pool if they need workers, paying at least the new minimum program wage. While there are many job guarantee proposals floating around, the Levy Economics Institute proposal is perhaps the most ambitious, Ray et al., 2018. Since some might not be familiar with the details and goals of the proposal, we will examine the Levy Institute's version in some detail before proceeding to evaluate the costs of the Green New Deal. The Levy proposal includes paying $15 per, per hour consistent with the Green New Deal's call for a national minimum wage of $15 per hour, plus generous benefits at 20% of the wage bill, including Medicare-style health care and free child care, plus an amount of spending equal to 25% of the wage bill to cover materials costs. Thus, the job guarantee not only provides full employment it also ensures an effective national minimum wage of $15 per hour, and this is accomplished whether or not this is the legal minimum. Footnote 8. Without a job guarantee, a legal $15 minimum wage may not be an effective minimum wage, because those who cannot obtain a job in the formal labor market will not receive that wage they might remain unemployed or be forced to work in informal labor markets at less than a minimum. End footnote. The levy simulation of the job guarantee puts the net annual impact on the federal government's budget at around $400 billion per year for the first 10 years. State budgets improve by $53 billion annually the boost to GDP is around $560 billion annually, while the boost to employment is around 19 million new workers, 15 million in the program, plus 4 million private sector jobs. These are high estimates, since the levy simulation does not, likely, does not include likely cost reductions, such as lowering spending on social programs and the penal system that would result from poverty reduction through job creation. Footnote 9. We assumed some budgetary saving from lower Medicaid spending and reduction of the earned income tax credit, as program workers would have higher incomes that would raise them above program thresholds. End footnote. What is important here is the possible impact on inflation, not the budgetary impact on the federal government. However, the net $400 billion boost to federal government spending, with the caveat that the report does not attempt to calculate all savings on other government programs, means that aggregate net wages have been increased by about that amount. Since wages will be largely spent, that directly boosts aggregate spending, including the multiplier impact of private job creation, we arrive at something more than half a trillion dollars of greater income and spending, much of which represents a demand for consumption goods. However, the impact on inflation according to the Levy Report simulation, using the FAIR model, 
is negligible, even though it would increase employment and GDP and would raise the effective minimum wage to $15 per hour across the country. In the most inflationary simulations, it finds that inflation would peak at just 0.74 percentage points above the baseline, and then would fall quickly to just 0.09% percentage points above the baseline by the end of the 10-year period used in our study. While some have added the costs of the job guarantee to the total Green New Deal cost, this presumes that the job guarantee supplies no resources to the Green New Deal. While in financial terms, the job guarantee represents a cost, in real terms, it is a source of resources. In particular, job guarantee workers can be employed for many of the Green New Deal projects, infrastructure, installation of insulation and solar panels, environmental, tree planting, and care of individuals and communities. In other words, the job guarantee is both a Green New Deal cost. It uses resources, mostly the consumption out of wages by employees, and also a source of resources for Green New Deal projects. However, its direct employment of labor resources is almost entirely of those that are not currently being used by the private sector. An important point is that we should not double count this cost as we total up the resources needed for the Green New Deal. It is both a cost and a source of resources. In the most optimistic scenario, the Job Guarantees workforce would be entirely committed to Green New Deal projects. If we assume that three-fourths of the simulated boost to GDP, $560 billion times 0.75 equals $420 billion annually, is attributed to Green New Deal employment, and assume the rest of the addition is due to increased private sector employment, we have over $400 billion worth of Green New Deal project work performed by job guarantee workers, equal to the net budgetary impact which, again, is important to the extent that it simulates additional consumption. By design, job guarantee projects would be able to utilize labor while below average skills and experience to ensure most workers could find suitable work. The jobs would also be labor intensive so that they would not require ex expensive capital investment or materials. As the Levy Report explains, these would include care services, care for the environment, community, and people, plus small construction and retrofitting projects, making homes more energy efficient, for example. Clearly, these workers would not be used as skilled labor in major infrastructure projects, which will be a core component of the Green New Deal. Footnote 10. In our report, Ray et al., 2018, we discuss the importance of respecting prevailing wage legislation and avoiding competition with union labor. Further, most public infrastructure projects will continue to be undertaken through contracts with private firms, hence would not be performed by the Job Guarantee Program. End footnote. Hence, the Job Guarantee workers would be used only in a subset of Green New Deal projects. Also note that Medicare-style health care, as well as child care coverage, is included in the levy simulation of a job guarantee program, with 15 million employed. Job guarantee projects would include employment of job guarantee workers in child care provision provided to families of job guarantee workers and others. And our estimate of program cost includes health care coverage. Hence, when calculating the resources required both by child care coverage and universal health care, we should avoid double counting, since those benefits have already been included for the 15 million job guarantee employees. We will assume that by directing most of the job guarantee workers to Green New Deal projects, the potential supply of resources available is 2% of GDP, the net budgetary costs. However, let us assume that only half of these of these resources 
are devoted to greening projects. The other half are devoted to what Chernever calls care for community and care for people projects. Service projects related to senior and youth care, teachers helpers, neighborhood and park cleanup, artistic projects, and so on. Thus, the Job Guarantee Program can provide resources needed for green projects in an amount equal to 1% of GDP and resources equal to another 1% of GDP for other care services. These would largely be in upgrading buildings and homes to improve energy efficiency, although some could be used in non-technical maintenance of energy projects, landscape maintenance, for example. For the purpose of totaling up resource availability and use, we will count the job guarantee as using an amount of resources equal to 2% of GDP. However, we count it as supplying an amount of resources for green projects equal to 1% of GDP. Hence, the net cost in terms of resource use is 1% of GDP. We have chosen not to directly count the contribution of job guarantee workers in care services as a net resource because, as discussed below, we do not include an estimate of the resource costs of the care services. Thus, we are assuming that the job guarantee care services essentially pay for themselves in terms of resource use. However, the job guarantee care workers will consume 1% of GDP, so they are treated as a Green New Deal resource cost. We now turn to other components of the Green New Deal.